Right, we're going to look at patch management on the Iterium platform. Now, patch management is a nice and crucial part of the uh, Windows maintenance and monitoring that all MSPs should be doing, and Iterium integrates this very nicely into their endpoint management. Now, to get into this, we need to go from our dashboard and click on Applications. Now, we have three different methods we can get to the area we need. We can go to the root endpoint manager, which will take us to our devices list. We can use the RMM link, which also takes us to a devices list. And we can go to device management, which takes us to a devices list. The third and special one is the patch management. That takes us directly to the patch management section of the RMM interface. We'll come back to that one in a minute. So we're going to choose one of our uh, two that does the same. So we're going to go straight to our devices list. And we can see here from our devices list straight away, we get a really nice um, column in the middle here called patch status. Now looking down the list here, you can see some states of our devices. We have the red X that says there are critical patches missing. So down PC one has one missing. We've got uh, down PC three has got everything up to date. We've then got uh, Rick S01 is got 201 criticals, etc. all the way down. And then we've got uh, WinRick2 at the bottom here as a uh, slightly non-critical patch that needs deploying. Now, something we can do quite easily from this is we've got only got a few PCs in our uh, test bed here, or if you wanted to pick on a particular computer because it was like, you just adopted it and you want to get it up to scratch, you can click straight on this number here and it'll take you straight to that endpoint under the uh, patch management tab on the operating system subsection with a filter already applied for the available devices for like, patches. So uh, all these patches here, you know, we've called the list of 201. As you can see, we've, we've got about 20 on the page here as it uh, dictates at the bottom and we can change that if we wanted. We have every available patch. Now we can filter this further if we wanted by clicking on the little filter button. By default, clicking on a link, it has applied this here status as available. As you can see here, we've got various other filters we can apply to make this list smaller, etc. But if we just look at the list itself, we have a couple of things we can do here. I can tick the button here at the top, which will select all 20 I can see. And then I can install, uninstall according to what I'd like to do with that patch. I could then also turn around and maybe just tick a couple and then install. Or if I was really, really uh, generous, I could say, let's go all 200. I could then tick the lot. Oops, there we go, that's better. Helps I can click a mouse. Now, obviously, doing this is quite dangerous, and uh, hopefully, you're all aware that just blowing out 200 patches is not going to be good for your PCs. And as you can see down the side, look, may reboot, maybe, maybe, maybe. That's not going to reboot. That's not going to reboot. So you, there might be a couple in there say definite reboot, um, but you know, please be aware to pick patches as required. So that is one way of managing patches on a per device level. Now that there is very useful and very good if you've got either problematic devices, a couple that are lagging behind, or you're just trying to build a new machine or something. Uh, it's not very good if you've got mass deployments you need to do. So what you can do is we can look now at our applications and we can go to patch management. This here, patch management, is the same as if we click applications and click on patch management here. Exactly the same interface. It's just a shortcut. So in patch management here, a slightly different angle. It's based not on a device this time, but the actual patch. So as you can see here, we've got the, the patch name, it's KB number or bulletin details, it's classification, product if known, and type of you know, severities, reboots, etc. You then also have how many devices don't have it installed, how many do, 
and you've also got the release date of the patch so for instance you know if you all look back at you know our history and stuff if you were looking at ms blaster for instance for uh, windows xp you would turn around and say you know what i've got two people that's got the patch installed and i've got 200 that don't so for instance in that scenario like i've got here for this windows 10 one you'd select that patch and you'd obviously then install that patch and it asks you to install it and it'll install it on all devices that don't currently have it installed so it allows you to target particular security vulnerabilities and particular patches or issues so say there's a particular program that needs a particular patch for it to work properly you could target that one patch and get it out um, you can also see as well you can schedule patch procedures which we'll go over more in a moment uh, but also as well you'll notice there is a procedures button there as well uh, but something you probably notice as well is you can hide and unhide patches so for instance we've got a patch here uh, let's say this is a really really old patch or something we're not worried about if it's been superseded with someone else we can hide the patch out of our view so it's no longer there but I've hidden it how do I unhide it well this is where you then got to go to your filter and you say show hidden patches once your filter is there you'll notice then we've got a slight different color at the top he's hidden we can then unhide and if I go there and show turn it back to normal filter there we are sorted so that there is on a power patch level once again that's all well and good but it's not the crux and the heart of the system you know we like things to be automated we like things to be kept up to date without us worrying about it and that's where the create patch procedures and scheduling comes into its own and that there's actually a completely different section this is configuration templates and you'll notice we've got something called procedures now if we look at some of the predefined procedures uh, patch deployment funny old thing there's already some pre-done ones for you that you can use or you can uh, make your own it's totally up to you but let's have a look here say for the critical patch updates for instance you can see this is its details its name what it's going to do on execution so it's going to do critical updates and that's it it's not going to do anything else it's just going to run the critical updates under the restart controls for this it's going to suppress reboots so if there's a reboot needed it's going to say don't do it we can schedule and we can see at the moment this is scheduled this particular one under this profile here now and this is where it gets a little bit uh, interesting because you've got the procedure which you've got to run which is how the thing is done you've then got the profile which is applied to devices which tells it how your AV is configured what to report on what to monitor but also as you can see now what to schedule so in your profile you can schedule to run this procedure say daily weekly every fifth hour whatever you want to schedule and what you feel is necessary something else it's really good is you can see the execution log so for instance if I click on this here I can see that Dan PC1 last run this on the 8th of the 12th at 7.39 um, and it ran it using this profile. It was a scheduled type of run and all the other details. We can drill down further into that and we can see that the procedure ran quite happy so nothing to worry about. Now you can obviously find out this details if I went to Dan PC1, I can go into logs that way and see exactly the same if we're looking from the device view. So just to show you that, if we go to Dan, we can go to logs at the end, we can look at patch logs, we can see there, there's the critical patch procedure called by the profile, is that the same scenario? We're just looking at it from the other angle. Now, depending on what you do as a business as well, if it fails, for instance, you could have it create a ticket, then you'll be able to see the tickets that link to this and how that's progressing. So you can see it's a very all-encompassing system for patch management, and it's 
very, very flexible and it's knowing what you want to do. So what I'll do, let's look at very quickly these procedures. Let's drill in and let's actually edit one so we can see. So if we look at a predefined one under patch deployment, if we go back into critical patches, right, as you can see, it's a predefined one, we can't edit it. So what we'll do, let's clone it so we can edit it so you can all see what your options are. Okay, so general, nice and easy. What is it? Why is it there? Execution, let's uh, edit this. Now, as you can see, it basically is tick boxes. So you can say, you know, critical updates, you know, you want to do definitions, features, or whatever combinations you want. Then security updates, by ticking that there, doesn't mean it's going to do any updates you've got to choose the severity of the update and obviously then got service pack tools etc now there is a very useful link here to actually tell you what Microsoft define as what because this is all based on obviously their best practice and what they classify so you know a direct article from Microsoft to explain what you're going to get in a feature you know does that include office updates does it do this does it you know that's all in this link here restart control let's look here as you can see it we got some very very basic options we can force a reboot from our clients we can suppress it and we can warn them about you know that you've done an update this is what needs to happen now these uh, options here are the identical options to what you'll see when you're installing things via MSI like the antivirus from Komodo if you integrate that into your Itarian platform they are the, the exactly the same options schedule as it says here you don't schedule it from here you schedule it from inside your profile and execution will be already done so if we quickly look at a profile let's look at our test one two three as you can see it's a very very simple profile it only has one section which is general giving it a name not particularly useful at the moment but what we'll do is if we go add we can see built various sections and depending on what you want to do you add what you want now we are going to do a schedule procedure so it is a procedure that we're going to add so now we get a procedures list so we can click add now we know it was critical so what we'll do is we use the built-in one it's going to start today we're going to schedule it let's say weekly on Wednesday yeah 12 p.m. middle of the day so we're going to say starting from today weekly 12 p.m. on Wednesdays we're gonna run this procedure now being it's patches and stuff I would always recommend skip if the device is offline now word to the wise if you don't do that what's going to happen is you're going to stack up tasks and update runs for a device so say a user goes on holiday for a week you know they don't turn their laptop on or desktop on because they're not in the office now the problem you've got they've had a week's worth of maybe daily so if i had this daily for instance for criticals which is probably a good idea um, they've got now a week's worth of daily so they've got five days or seven days actually of them updates that need to be processed so first thing that happens they turn on the computer the itarian um, endpoint manager picks up talks to the server collects these jobs it's now going to run updates seven times over which as you can imagine is going to slow down the computer and then unfortunately you're going to get a really really upset customer on the phone because they've just come back to work and you've made their first day back after the holiday a miserable nightmare um so yeah word to the wise on updates that is a very very good option now interesting the option above which i've skipped for the moment is run this procedure immediately when the profile is assigned to a device now that there very very interesting option and it has some great flexibility uh could be anything from auto installing software auto installing certain updates um so say that you needed to have 
a particular version of .NET Framework for a computer, um, you could create a profile um, or procedure, sorry, that uh, installs that particular update. Um, you could then have this procedure run as somebody gets the profile assigned, it automatically runs that, so you're not having to remember as an IT consultant or MSP that, oh, this device is going into this business, it needs that, this, that, the other, before it can run that, um, because you program it. As it's programmed, you can type of set and forget, so you dump it into the right section in your profile and bang it does the job for you obviously it's endless opportunities is knowing what you want to do and it's a little bit off piece from this video so procedures for um, updates you probably won't want to do that unless it's something special but that one there is a definite do Anyway, I believe that wraps it up for today so just to recap we've covered how to get to your patch management We've covered how to do it on a per device level, how to do it on a per patch level, and how to schedule it for good old constant maintenance and keeping people up to date. Thank you for listening.